Hi, my name is Beth Massey, and today I'm going to show you how you can copy data from one row in a grid into another row using Visual Studio Light Switch. Light Switch is a new development tool for building business applications for the desktop and the cloud. Light Switch makes it easy to create data-centric rich internet applications. I already have an application open that we've been building in this video series. It's a simple order management system that allows us to work with customers and their orders. Let's run this real quick to see what we have so far. Now in a previous video, we created some screens to allow us to work with a customer's open orders. Okay, so this allows us to open or to add, add and manipulate orders and their order details. Now in the previous video, I showed you how you could add defaults to um, new rows. So we set the quantity automatically equal to one. But what I really want to do, that's only for new rows, that's for any new item added. But what I want to do now is I want to copy the data from the last row into the new row and then allow the user to change from there. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to write some code on our screen in order to look at the previous row and copy that data into the new row and set those defaults. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. Okay, so we're going to open up the open order list detail. That's the screen we want to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to look at when we, uh, when the user adds a new row into the order details grid to be able to find the previous row so I can grab the values from that row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, just click on the write code button, okay? And this will bring you into the code for your screen. Now we have a, we have a couple uh, lines of code already written on this screen from a previous video that sets the customer on the order header. Okay, we're going to do something similar. What we're doing here is we're just looking at when the collection itself changes. Now there's two collections on this on this uh, particular screen. The orders themselves, these are the order headers, as well as the details, order details. Okay, so when we drop down our declarations box here, you'll see that we have an order details changed method that we can handle. Okay, so this is going to basically be the same idea. We're going to copy this line of code up here. If the action, meaning what's happening to the collection, is we're being added to, then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find the previous row. So what we need to do is check a couple things, okay? We need to say if um, the order details, okay, the count is greater than one, okay, because, because we can't do anything if there's no rows in there, okay, and we need to also check the new items. This new items is the list of um, new order details that are being added to this collection. Okay, and I just want to make sure that that's just um, the new items count is also equal to one. Okay, so that the user is only adding one at a time. Okay, that typically that's what's going to happen. Okay, so then I'm going to set a little try catch block here just in case any of these indexes aren't quite right we're going to just catch the exception and we won't set any default values in that case so what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to find the new detail row okay and that's coming in here okay as order detail it's coming into this new me sorry the new detail is coming into sorry as e dot new items okay so that's the list of items being added and since we're only making sure that we're checking that the new items count is one, then the index for this particular order detail is the first one, okay, zero. That's the index in the array. Okay, so then we're going to say, what's the current detail? Okay, and the way we get that is order detail. The way we get that is we look at the current collection, me.orderDetails, and what we also get with this um, with this parameter as the notify collection change event args is we also get to see the new starting index, meaning where is this order order detail being added in the collection. Okay, so the grid is basically just displaying these collections, right? And so we're manipulating the actual um, entities themselves. Okay, so we're getting at this new entity. The new starting index, okay, is where the new row is being added. So the one previous to that is minus one, okay? 
Okay, so for instance, we're adding a new row. We already have a current row in the system. We have one row in the system, let's say. The new row is being added at the new starting index of 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. So that's going to give you, the current detail is going to give you that current row at the top. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Okay, so then now that we have the new detail and the current detail, all we need to do is go ahead and maybe we can just specify, let's say the price um, is the current details price. Okay, so this is where I'm setting the new rows values to that current row. Okay, so you can go ahead and pick anything that you want to set by default. So let's just do price and quantity. Uh, quantity. Okay, so we're automatically setting the price and quantity on the new row for the user. And if anything happens, we don't really want to do anything, but we always want to make sure that we log some information later, That because if we don't, we might uh, lose uh, lose valuable debugging information that we might need later. Okay, so I'm just going to say uh, a little message. And the user won't see this. This will just be for our debugging purposes later. Okay, we'll just do something like that and then we'll add the uh, the exception text to string. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, hit F5 to uh, build and run this, see what we got. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up a customer's orders. Here are the open order screen that we added that code to. Now you'll see that here's the Oreos, the quantity of five, the price of seven dollars. Okay, so we're pulling down the price, the quantity and the price. So when I click the plus to add a new row, you'll notice there it goes. There's the five and there's the price of seven. Okay, so that's how you can um, you you can copy data from the last row in a grid into the new row just to allow users to enter data much quickly. They have some defaults set based on the previous rows values. So thanks for watching.